Hey, it's your guy Ty. Welcome back to Listen Black, your home for everything in black publishing. After today's episode, hopefully you'll have everything you need to make a decision on if you should turn your book into an audiobook. Now look, y'all, I don't play in fantasy land unless it has to do with media. So you know that everything that I'm coming with today is straight from verified sources, the publishers themselves, or verified data by sales reports. I know y'all are ready to see what's tea, so let's jump into the episode. All right, y'all, so all the data from today is coming from surveys conducted by Edison Research, Triton Digital, and the members of the Audio Publishers Association. Now, unfortunately, we do not have the sales data from 2021 yet. Um, It is still a bit early, but all of these numbers are coming out of 2022, and they are very representative because, as you'll see, there's been a trend in the audiobook industry of year-over-year growth. And this growth has taken place since 2014. So I know what you're thinking. Hey, 2020 isn't really a good representation, right? Everybody was in the house. Of course they listened to audiobooks. But as you see, there was actually a big shift of folks that were already listening to audiobooks in their car switching over to listening at home with their listening hours increasing as well. Now, I want to come out of the gate with some really eye-popping numbers. Now, they call the time spent listening to audio share of ear. Right now, overall, this share of ear for audiobooks has grown 60% since 2017. Daily audiobook listeners spend more time listening to books than any other form of audio, including radio, podcasts, anything audio. Daily reach of audiobook consumption has grown 71% since 2017. Daily audiobook listeners spend nearly two hours more per day listening to audio than the general population. That's five and a half hours versus a little over three and a half hours. Now, I said that's impactful, but like, what does it really mean to an author, right? Um, what does it mean to a smaller publisher? What this means is once you get someone listening to audiobooks, once you find that niche within your audiobook realm, they will consume your media. They are ravenous about their content. They are listening to everything. Like, I even have friends who are not in our industry, and they talk to me all the time. Oh, my God, I love this author. I listen to four of their audiobooks in a week. Um, I love this author. I've listened to all of their audiobooks this year, everything that's come out from them this year. They are rapidly consuming this content. Now, other notable findings from the survey are the percentage of Americans 18 and over who have ever listened to an audiobook is now 46%, up from 44% in 2020. So in a year, from 2020 to 2021, it grew by 2%. Membership in audiobook services increased, with 38% of listeners indicating they subscribe to at least one such service. 56% of audiobook listeners are now under the age of 45 This is up from 52% in 2020, so we have a 4% jump in that year. 70% of consumers agree audiobooks are a good choice for relaxing. Now, this is a stat that could easily get swept under the rug, but I think if you know anything about marketing, anything about consumer behavior, what is the number one thing that consumers are looking for? They are looking for ease. They are looking for relaxation. They are looking for entertainment. They are looking for something that makes them feel good. This data is telling us plain as day that audiobooks make people feel good. That alone should inform your decision on whether or not you want to integrate audiobooks into your publishing ecosystem. Now, unless you're a big five publisher, um, you're either going to be an author who has a niche in their genre or a publisher that niches um, within a genre or just a few genres. So here's the data on the market share of each genre and how it's been performing. Uh, We have general fiction. It owns 20.1% of the share. Science fiction or fantasy at 13.7%. Mysteries, thrillers, and suspense at 11.8%. General nonfiction at 11.3%. And history, biographies, or memoirs rounding out the top five at 10.2%. Self-help audiobooks, children's and young adult, including teens, business, and romance audiobooks, combined for only 27.7% altogether. 
Now, I know that's probably a little shocking because romance seems like it's always the top seller. But as we can see, when it comes to audiobooks, romance is near the bottom. So it may not actually make a lot of sense to turn your romance into an audiobook unless you have that following that is hooked on audiobooks already. So then we have religious or faith-based audiobooks coming in at 1.7%, the classics coming in at 1.5%, health and fitness at 1.4%, and humor at 0.6%, rounding out the bottom of the list. Now, this data doesn't necessarily mean that you should only be producing your audiobook if you're in one of those top five genres, right? You can have an audience that loves audiobooks and loves your titles, right? We've already learned that people that love to listen to audiobooks will keep listening to audiobooks. So you just have to find those folks. Health and Fitness only had 0.7% of the share in 2019 and jumped to 1.4% of the share in 2020. That's a 115% increase. The Classics had a 69% increase. History, Biography, and Memoirs had a 42% increase. So what that is telling you is that there is so much room for growth. There is so much room for discovery, for bringing in new listeners, and bringing them to the genre that you prefer. Now, if you are a publisher and not an author, it may make sense to include all or either of general fiction, mystery and thrillers, and science fiction and fantasy, since they do account for close to half of all revenues. The revenues in those genres are really keeping the big publishers afloat. So if it's working for them, of course it would work for indie publishers and publishers that don't have the same amount of scale. Now look, you may also be a writer And you don't necessarily want to publish your book. Your writing may not be good in a reading format. Um, So they do have a category called Audio First. Uh, Sales from the Audio First publications were up by just over $12.7 million in 2020 compared to 2019. That accounted for a 7.2% of sales revenues and a 15% increase in revenues from those titles versus 2019. So see, you don't even need to go to print anymore. Obviously, we have ebooks, but that's not even necessary anymore. Some people's work only translates through spoken word. And if your work is like that, Audio First would be a great avenue for you. Now, I know some of you are still thinking, okay, Ty, this is all great, but are audiobooks still for me? Well, I think you can see from this data that if you are a publisher... Um, or even an indie author that can pay the upfront costs of producing an audiobook, your potential return on investment is very high. You may even be able to enter into an agreement or an arrangement with a production company that produces audiobooks and split that cost or have them take on that cost and then split those revenues coming on the back end. And now you have passive income. The great thing about an audiobook, just like any show or form of content, is once it's made, it can make you money in perpetuity. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that most of these sales are coming from audiobooks catered to adults. Audiobooks aimed at adults made up 92% of the sales revenue. Um, Young adults was 4.8. Children was 3.1. That's not saying that you shouldn't market books to young adults and children, but you have to keep in mind where are they getting the money to buy your audiobook, to buy the subscription to the service that hosts your audiobook. Um, And then you have to think about do parents want to play audiobooks for their children instead of read to them? Um, And again, it's a double-edged sword. There are parents that do both, either or. I mean, you just have to figure out how to find your tribe. Like, that's what I would say is the most important. I mean, across all the genres and across all demographics, it's always find your tribe. But specifically when it comes to those young adult books and those children's books, you want to make sure you are in a dedicated space with people that are like-minded and with a consumer base that already regularly buys your product all right so those are the numbers y'all thanks again for tuning in 
I want to give a shout out to the APA, Audiobook Publishers Association, for this amazing data. They are a great group. They host the Audis, which is essentially the audiobooks version of the Oscars. And they're just an overall great resource if you do enter into the world of audiobooks. Of course, I want to thank our sponsor, Tied Up Studios, and all the support that they give to us. With that said, this is your guy, Ty. This is the Listen Black Podcast, and I can't wait to share our next episode with you. So until then, stay safe, choose love, and listen black. Thank you.